In Elden Ring, the highest possible level is 713. It's what you get when you've got every attribute maxed to 99. Few players ever actually get there because the level of grinding is just astronomical, but there's some things you can really only do once you get there. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on GameRanks, 10 things you can only do at max level. Now, most players are going to finish this game somewhere around level 120, which leaves 600 to go. The rune cost at leveling up just balloon, especially when you get far enough. Past level 100, the cost level up is around the 100,000 rune mark, but at 700, it's 8 million runes for a single level. So with that in mind, we understand that most people don't have the time to get to these places, and that's why we're going to show you what it looks like. Starting with number 10, at max level, you can take down the toughest bosses with ease. Now, this is probably the most obvious thing you can do when you're max level. Everything that stands in your way, you can just plow right through it. With a massive health bar and a ton of FP, you can basically just stand next to some of the toughest bosses in the game and spam your most powerful abilities till they're dead. Guys like Estelle, Morgoth, the Fire Giant, and even the last bosses die in seconds to your attacks. The Fire Giant especially gives a ton of trouble in an organic situation, but at max level, he just melts. Fire Giant, it's just really satisfying how much easier the game becomes when you're at max level, even if you lose some of the satisfaction of beating a tough boss. Part of it is that it takes forever to get there and it takes a ton of work, but on the other hand, it's also not super fun, because the only way you'll possibly get enough runes to get to the max level is either grinding endgame enemies or running through new game plus a couple of times, so at that point you probably experienced all of the difficult versions of it anyways. To just hand these guys their asses after they've given you as much trouble as they would have had to at this point, very satisfying. At number 9, go nuts with gimmicky builds and outfits. Once the novelty of being able to do literally everything wears off, one fun thing you can do when you're maxed out is screw around with unconventional builds, like stuff that wouldn't normally fly but's fun to play around with. At a lower level, these types of things would put you at a pretty severe disadvantage, but when you are essentially a god waltzing through what to everyone else is an incredibly hostile world, but to you is simply a walk in the park, there is very little that can be done to stop you. I've seen a lot of unusual builds online that are good for a laugh, but at this point I kind of wanted to make one. Like I call this one the Rocket Man. You deck yourself out with some heavy armor, then equip the Prelate's Infernal Crozier with two hands and the Envoy's Great Horn on your back. Now you just find a group of enemies and press L2 to blast off. At max level, you can keep this thing going for a ridiculous amount of time. The damage you do for charging forward isn't great, but it's hilarious when enemies get stun locked with your hammer. And they can't fight back because, again, you're literally the toughest MF anywhere around. That's just one possibility. I'm sure you can come up with something better. It's basically a joke at this point. And number eight, get revenge on all those frustrating early game bosses. Like, another fun thing to do is to go into New Game Plus and just annihilate some of the early game difficulty spikes like they're nothing, because to you they are now nothing. Like, kill the grafted scion boss that normally just annihilates you in the tutorial with just no effort on your part. Beat on the tree sentinel relentlessly to make up for all those times he killed you in the beginning. Even, like, a total difficulty wall, like Margit, is a chump when you're decked out in the heaviest armor and wielding maxed out weapons. Of course, this is something you can do at any point after beating the game normally. It's not something you can only do at max level, but it's kind of just pitiful, the difference between your power level and theirs. And the trouble that they gave you when you first started this game sets it up to be a really satisfying ass kicking. There's basically nothing you can do against them. It's so unfair, it's funny. And number seven, legitimately race through the game in just a few hours. At this point, there's nothing that can stop you. So why not just rush through the game and see how quickly you can finish it while still doing everything that you actually have to do. It's interesting just to see how short you can actually make the game in the end, because it is massive, but there's actually not that much that's actually required to beat it. It's just difficult to do. The real list of stuff you have to do to beat this game is kill two shard bearers, go to the capital, open the way to the mountaintop of the giant, 
Alliance, go to the crumbling Fair of Missouri, and then take on the last boss of the end game. That's pretty much it. Huge chunks of the game can be skipped because you don't need those levels anymore and runes are pretty much meaningless now, so you might as well just rush through everything. Of course, getting through the game in a few hours is nothing compared to speedrunners who can glitch through the game in something crazy like 20 minutes or less, but to get through a game that normally takes 80 hours to finish in less than 5 is still pretty crazy when you think about it. And number six, you can become a jack of all trades and a master of everything. Doesn't normally go that way, but you are a master of all trades. There's nothing you aren't perfect at. Cast every spell, equip every weapon, do whatever you want because there's no restrictions anymore. Instead of focusing on one specific build, you can mix and match as much as you want. You can be a heavily armored spell slinging swordsman, and there's nothing the game can do to stop you. You'll probably end up looking pretty ridiculous, but it's fun to run around and do everything all at once, and it's worth it. With a maxed out equipment load, you can fill up your armament slots with everything you could want while still wearing the heaviest armor, and you can still do a medium roll. Normally, you're really limited limited by what you can do in this game, so just being able to cast the ultimate spells while lugging around the heaviest weapons feels liberating in a weird way. And number five, you can kill all the NPCs because you don't need them. Okay, once again, you can really do this anytime. There's nothing stopping you from indulging your evil side. But when you're max level, NPCs have nothing to offer you anymore. So if you are so inclined, you can just smash them. They stand absolutely no chance. Like bosses don't stand any chance against you. Why would some guy in the middle of the town square who says something annoying every time you talk to him? What's interesting is that they actually give these NPCs these dying words and you obviously can't hear them you can't hear that dialogue or experience that at all unless either you hack the game files and get into that or kill all the npcs at the end of the day killing everything just saves you time too you can just trade their bell bearings into the shop twin husks and get access to their inventory that way of course you end a lot of quests prematurely and it does feel wrong to crack alexander open like an egg but you've probably dealt with all of them at this point you probably feel a little bit like Dr. Manhattan. You've outgrown them. You're max level. So why not? And number four, probably one of the most interesting things is that you can still get killed because you're not invincible. Like, you end up discovering that you're not Dr. Manhattan. You're not that tough. It might feel like it, but it isn't like some games where when you're maxed out, you might as well be invincible. You still take some pretty heavy damage from certain attacks, so you can still get your poise broken and death can still hit you out of nowhere. It's not nearly as sudden or as often when you're playing the game at a normal level, but certain bosses can still melt your HP like it's nothing. Even when you're decked out in the heaviest armor and have as much HP as is possible, in the game, it's just that kind of game. Even at max level, you still have to be a little careful. And number three, you can let your Mimic do all the work for you. These guys were nerfed pretty severely in a recent patch, but it's still fun to see what the Mimic tier at max level will get up to without your input, especially if you give yourself a full set of spells and equipment for them and just let them go crazy. I don't know, the Mimic tier is a spirit summon you can find in Nokran and has the unique property of mimicking your character build exactly. So what's fun about them is they'll literally use the weapons, spells, and armor you already have equipped. And what makes them so fun to play around with at max level is they'll be slinging spells and attacking like crazy, and even though they're not as powerful or act as intelligently as they did pre-patch, they can still do some pretty impressive stuff. With the right set of equipment, your Mimic can clear out entire enemy camps single-handedly, and they can even take out bosses entirely without your input. Just sit back and watch. The fact something that is just imitating you is basically an unstoppable force is, I mean, it's kind of funny when you think about it. And number two, a pretty fun wild build is this unstoppable mech that Adamantium OK of Reddit came up with. Like, it's just a ton of fun to screw around with, and it's effective at basically any level, but it's ridiculous at max level. It requires a few specific parts, the unendurable frenzy spell, the physic that makes it so you don't spend FP for a while, and the iron jar perfumer bottle, which gives you a, a crazy high poise. Combine all that with a properly heavy suit of armor, and you basically become an unstoppable eye beam blasting death machine. Again, credit for this idea goes to Adamantium OK, and they primarily used it for PvP where it is very good, but at max level it can be kind of hard to find PvP opponents, so just keep that in mind. 
As you can see, it just basically melts enemies, decimates bosses, and it's also all around crazy looking. This is the kind of thing that makes playing Elden Ring at max level just a ton of fun, because you're capable of this absolutely crazy stuff that there's not no way to do if you're playing the game normally, but it just becomes effortless. And finally, at number one, take it easy. If you actually manage to get to max level in this game, you have put an obscene amount of work into it, and you deserve a break. Just take it easy. Have a breather. Take a seat. In game or out of the game. No one will stop you. If they try, you can end them. And speaking of the end, that is all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. And don't forget to enable all notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.